I've been building this modified Ben Eater computer. Uh, it's capable of running at 10 megahertz, and it has uh, video memory that uh, is not fully hooked up yet, but I have two uh, 32K memory banks. One's going to be foreground uh, video, the other's going to be background video. And uh, in order to run at 10 megahertz, I did find uh, to, to run reliably at 10 megahertz, I had to replace the main system memory with a high speed memory chip. This memory chip is a 15 nanosecond memory chip versus the normal 55 nanosecond uh, static RAMs uh, such as these. Now in my last video, I demonstrated this code that I had written for testing the memory. And here it's testing the system memory as indicated by the fact that it's using bank 00, which is the system memory and block 00. And it's running at 10 megahertz. And you can see that the problem I was having is that as soon as it gets to uh, in this case, bank one, which is the foreground memory, uh, it, uh, sorry, background memory, it begins throwing errors. And so it runs fine at 10 megahertz uh, on the system memory, but when I get to the uh, video memory, it, it does not work. It's throwing errors. Here, um, the errors, well, this is supposed to tell you a little bit about the errors, but I can see there's even errors when it's showing the display. But for example, this shows that there have been seven errors so far. Um, that uh, it's at memory location 20 F2 that the memory occurred. So it's testing this memory location. It was expecting, it was taking the F2 and adding 00. zero and so it would expect, well, this is odd because it should have told me that it's expecting F2, but here even this is an error. It says it's computed F3, it got an, e, uh, an EF. So anyway, running at 10 megahertz for this memory uh, for the video memory is not working. Now, uh, of course, you might suggest, why don't I replace it with these faster RAM chips? Well, I did attempt to do that, as I indicated at the end of my last video that I would do. And unfortunately, that actually just made the problem even worse. And the problem was that, uh, the, I believe the problem is that there's a lot of additional logic besides just the address decoder for figuring out which of these two chips and which... Uh, uh, block of memory, 8K block of memory on these chips is being addressed. So unfortunately, because of that, I was not able to run at 10 megahertz. Um, if I change this over to 5 megahertz and let it run, um, it runs pretty well. It runs through the system memory extremely reliably. Um, as you can see, it's running a little slower. Um, not, not quite half the speed because a lot of the time is spent at the end of each page um, updating the display. This display indicates number of errors that um, have occurred so far, zero so far. Um, this is a value that is being used um, as a computation. This shows the uh, block or the page of memory that is under address within the 8K block. This tells you which blank zero zero is the system memory, um, uh, which is really just determined by what address is selected. Uh, but I, I write zero zero uh, here to indicate um, that I'm at, I'm using the system memory. Then 0, 01 and 0, 02 are used to select between um, the output of this latch gives, selects which of these two chips is being uh, so th sorry this determines which of these chips is being used and then this is which 8k block is being used so right now I'm in the lowest 8k block and you can see that um, it's running pretty well. I'm done I've done millions of computations already and there's only been nine errors so it's not. Uh, it's not perfect, but given that this is just me video memory, that might be sufficient. Um, but I really want this thing to be able to run at 10 megahertz. So I was asking myself, what could I do to make it run at 10 megahertz? I ran across another problem. Um, you may have noticed now that I have wired up the uh, address lines from the uh, counters. Um, and these are actually from the adder chips that are used for the uh, video uh, shifting that I demonstrated in an earlier video. And so I'm adding, I'm, I'm running those lines to these uh, transceiver chips, which are going to be allow, used to allow the video card, which is over here, to access the video RAM when the computer is not accessing it. Now, the way I set that up was um, I basically just ran the logic that selects these transceivers, which are the computer. These are the transceivers that allow the computer to talk to the uh, video RAM. And I just ran that through uh, uh, a NOT gate, an inverter, 
And I ran that down to the um, selection of this so that basically any time the video RAM, the, the computer is not addressing the video RAM, then the, um, then the uh, video card would be able to address the video RAM. This would have the effect that if you're um, talking to the video RAM during the display interval of the display, then the display would not be displaying... Uh, would basically display uh, whatever you're writing or reading from the RAM rather than displaying um, what is supposed to be displayed. I'm, I'm going to address that later, but actually I have a bigger problem. Um, if you look very closely here, the, this, is the, this is the output that goes to the select on these transceivers, and it is actually not wired to the NOT chip. It is wired to the high, so I'm not actually selecting the... Uh, the video memory right now. If I do select the video memory, you'll see that it just starts erroring very, very rapidly. So this logic does not work well enough to select the memory. I've tried a number of um, changes to this, changing how it's related to the clock, for example, um, separate gating that doesn't involve the clock. I've tried a number of things to try and get this to work, and I continue to have this problem. So I have a couple, I have two things I can do for that, um, which I will cover in the, my next video. Um, but just to peek ahead, the two things I could consider is going back to the way Ben Eater does it when he connects his video card to his uh, computer, which is to simply turn off the CPU during the display interval and not use it. I don't want to go that route. Instead, I'm going to go another route, which would be to simply... Um, make sure that the CPU does not address the video memory during the display interval and only addresses it during the blank interval. But I also want to deal with the fact that I can't run this at 10 megahertz when I'm talking to the video memory. So what I decided to do was to use a concept called a multiplexer. And in case you're not familiar with a multiplexer, um, uh, let me explain uh, describe it to you. So a multiplexer is a device which can accept a binary address. Some have uh, two bits, some have three bits. And those, th that address is used um, to select between a number of inputs to an output. So if it, for example, is a two-bit uh, multiplexer, or a multiplexer with a two-bit address, it can take four inputs, and which address is, is applied to the address lines will determine which of those four inputs is applied to the output. There's also three-bit uh, multiplexers, which can have eight inputs, and the three-bit address will choose between which of those eight, amongst those eight inputs, which one will be output. I'm doing something very simple here, and I'm just using discrete logic gates to build a one-bit multiplexer. So it has a single address line, which has a single bit, which could be low or high. And if it's, if it's, uh, if it's low, for example, if the select is low, then uh, I did this with a single um, four gate, two input NAND gate. So if, if the select is low, then the input to this NAND gate will be low, and the input to this NAND gate will be high because I'm inverting it with this AND gate, right? So this so this select signal uh, will output will cause this output to either be high or to be uh, the inverse of clock two, uh, which I've called this input or clock divided by two. Because that's the input I'm going to put here is clock divided by two. So let's say this select signal is low. Then, um, then, then the output of the AND gate will be low always, which means this output will always be high. So if the select is low, then this output is high. On the other hand, if the select is low, then this output, uh, then, then if that's low, then this is an inverter. So the output of this will be, um, will, will be high. And that means that, and this, this is, I wrote this in the wrong place, this H or clock, sh clock bar should be here. So if this input is high, then when, the clock, then when the clock input is high, then those are high and high, which make the AND gate high, which makes the NAND gate low, so that'll be low. And when the clock is low, then the output will be high, and so you get the inverse of the clock signal here. So if the select is low, then we get the inverse of the clock signal here. And then here, because this is high, and this is low, basically this clock signal gets inverted again and the output is the clock. If the select is high, then it just works the other way. Now this signal here will be low, which means that this output is always high, and this output will be 
the inverse of the clock over two signal, which means the output will be the clock over two signal. So this is my one bit multiplexer. And I've wired it up here. And how I've wired it is I have this latch and I have lots of bits left over in this latch. I have the, I have, uh, the, low, the two low order bits are being used to select which, uh, which block of addresses, which HK block of these 32 kilobit, kilobyte uh, memory chips are selected. And the two high bits are used to select one or even both of these at the same time, or neither of them. Um, and depending on um, the outputs of these, these, out, these two bits, and these are inverted. So um, when these are both high, these chips are not selected. And if they're both low, both are selected. Um, and then, so now I've got these four bits in between. So I've selected one of them, and I've run it over to the uh, first input which is the, the select on my, uh, on my diagram. And uh, so I've run that over and I've run that to, um, I've run that also to, uh, so I've run it to, to this input and then I've also run it to this inverter to this. So here's, I don't know if you can make that out, but there's a, there's a jumper right here that's connecting the two inputs of this, inver of this uh, NAND gate to create an inverter. And so now I've got my inverted output is this white wire jumping over here. That's this one. And um, this output here is this wire here. And um, you can see that I've, out, I've wired the output. There's a little jumper here. Maybe you can't see it, but there's a little jumper here wiring the output of, the, of uh, this, this gate to the input of this gate. And so here's the output of the gate. So if I take this output and I connect it to the clock signal on the CPU, then that output will uh, that that will output whichever clock signal is selected. And so here's my clock signal um, here. I'm going to and that wire is a little too short, so I have a longer wire here. This wire is really longer than it should be, but I'm going to connect this to the clock input. So that's that's this input here. So that's that's this input on on this. Uh, this NAND gate here. So there's that input. And then the other input, I need the clock, the uh, five megahertz clock. And I'm going to connect that to the other input, which is, which is here. That's this pin here. That's the other, that's, uh, that's this input. All right. So having done that, um, I can reset this and we'll see how it works. And I am getting a lot of errors, even in the system RAM. What did I do wrong here? This was working perfectly, of course, before I started the video. All right. I shortened this wire a little bit, and that uh, gave me a cleaner signal here. Still not working great. Let's see here. All right, so that's working pretty well. Um, so obviously, if I could clean up my wiring a bit, I have this extra wire running down here where I used to have the, the timer, uh, the clock feeding into, so that should probably go. All that's acting like an antenna and picking, picking stuff up. Um, the other problem I'm having, this is another problem I had. I still have, uh, I still have this wired to wire in the um, right here. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, the output enable that's uh, wired to these transceivers and I still have that connected. And this is a weird problem I've been having as well when I have this connected as I do. Um, this is, this is, you can see this ran to the end of the block, the, 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 the system memory and then it just stopped. And it didn't really stop. I can, I can um, turn on my debugger board and we can take a look and see what happened. And we see that it's just in a weird place. Like it's, it's in this, it's in memory 94D8 and uh, now it jumped to uh, 8,000, which is where I have my interrupt request, and it's just got an RTI, so it's just going to return from interrupt, which means it's just going to return to, uh, it's going to jump to uh, DA34, I guess. And um, yeah, so, uh, sorry, 94DA. Yeah, because return from interrupt pulls three things off the stack, so I couldn't see what the third thing was. This, by the way, if you haven't um, seen it before, I've seen my videos on my debugger board. I've got a, this single step debugger board that will let me um, see what is the values in the A register, the X register, the Y register, all the flags. This is the uh, program counter location. This is the value at the program counter. This is the um, location of the stack. 
And this is the value at the stack plus one, and this is the value at the stack. Um, and so as you can see, it's it's kind of jumping around. And that that's happening. I find it very strange because I haven't even touched the video RAM yet, so it shouldn't make any difference. But somehow having this transceiver turned on is somehow it seems to be turning on the 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 uh, uh, is 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 allowing something happening so that something gets some bus contention or something. And what en what ends up happening is um, I end up getting um, I end up getting um, um, FF in the top of the stack instead of instead of uh, the eight zero that should be here. So this should read eight zero two E, but instead FF is in there in kittens up in there. And uh, I have not resolved exactly like how, like how FF always FF always um, there in the stack. It happens. I can go through a couple of, uh, I can go through a couple of test values um, and then, and then it will, and then it will happen. Uh, it will. It'll end up putting FF in there. If I if I uh, put in a break in the program and I stop it soon enough, I can watch and see that that's eight zero, and then it stays there as long as I have patience to step through it. But as soon as I start it again, almost immediately it goes to FF. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable that again, so we can just we're just testing the mem the video memory now. I'm not going to solve this problem in this video, um, but I am going to get the. I'm getting, what I have now is I have the. I have the system memory running at 10 megahertz, and I have that when it when it switches to talking to the uh, video memory, it's going to switch to uh, to two and a half megahertz, where it's supposed to. Everything works until you turn on the the uh, camera. Okay, quick follow-up. It literally was the camera causing the problem. Uh, I'm using my cell phone as the camera, and it's uh, connected via Wi-Fi. And between it and the computer next to, uh, that I'm sending the recording to, sitting next to it, it was causing too much interference, and that was causing the problem. So uh, what I did was I removed this wire, which had been running along here, which is where I used to connect the clock up to. Um, and I also wrapped this uh, black wire and grounded it on both ends to provide some shielding for uh, this uh, clock. So now I've got the video memory running at two and a half uh, megahertz, and I have the system memory running at 10 megahertz, and it's running great. I can run the, the video memory at uh, five megahertz, but I do get uh, some errors. So it'll be a question of whether that's going to be acceptable when it comes to actually uh, displaying the video. So we'll see. But anyway, this is working how I wanted it. Um, here it is. It's in the background RAM. Uh, background, it's using the background bank. Uh, it's using bank or blo uh, bank, and it's using block zero, and um, it's working great. So. Uh, I hope uh, you're enjoying my videos. If you like what I'm doing here, please uh, subscribe and click the like button. And I will talk to you all again very soon.